Just looking at uh, the drop in terms of uh, the deficit, um, it, a, a difference of 154 billion shillings uh, this time around because they are saying that uh, the budget deficit this time around is 695 billion compared to 849 billion that was there in the financial year 2022-2023. Uh, Honorable Kero, does this paint uh, some positive uh, picture for you? Or, uh, what would our, you our budget deficit has averaged about 9% nine, nine for the last 10 years of, of the previous administration. Um, but if you look at every, every budget session, they, they, they've pledged to bring it down to 4%, uh, below 5%. It's always been there, and they have not succeeded. And, and the reason is because the, the, the revenue targets are always very ambitious. And if you, don't receive, if you don't achieve those revenue targets, but you overshoot on your expenditure, then the deficit goes back to 7, 8, 9%. Uh, the thing of concern to me is that in this statement, budget policy statement, if you look at it, our debts are going to increase. Our debts are going to increase to 12.4 trillion by 2027. By the time this administration has done its five years, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it says the figure will be 12.4 trillion. Um, the government will have borrowed 3.9 trillion in the next five years, this government. This, this is their, their own information in the document. Um, and, and, and this flies in the face of the pledge to try and, you know, reduce um, debt. Uh, when you look at this document, there's no intention to reduce debt. Mm -hmm. uh, for the simple reason that um, even despite having very, very uh, ambitious revenue targets, their expenditure is huge. So that um, you know, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, planning to spend five trillion, you know, expenditure above five trillion by 2027. Um, and, 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 and the reason why I'm worried is that the figure will even go more than that, the 12 trillion. And the reason is very simple. They have based these estimates on a very conservative uh, budget deficit because they hope to expand the revenue. Uh, base. They want to leverage on IT and they want to go into all those uh, informal sector and all those things and VAT and, you know, and all those things. But what if they don't achieve those targets then, uh, of the revenue? So once you set your target for expenditure, you would want to spend the money. If you don't have it, then you'll be forced to borrow. And, and, and this, is, this is my concern. For example, this financial year ending June, the target for the revenue is 2 trillion, 2.07. And KRA is already behind, you know, the figures published for November, mm -hmm. for the first five months, they're behind by 30 billion. If, if they fall behind today, they cannot raise 2 trillion. And you're saying in the next four years, by end of 2027, by, by June 27, you want revenue to be double, minimum 4, four trillion. Um, and that's going to be a tall order. And, 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 and given the background of the economy, the economy is still in bad shape. Uh, you know, um, we will sit here and talk about the economy because we talk about Nairobi and the factories and the, and the employed people earning income but so forth. But I think when you look at the economy, in reality, our economy is still very bad. People have no jobs. People's incomes are down. Um, there's, it's huge unemployment. The cost of living is still growing, going up. It's not going down. So to try and create a situation where you... It's, so my, my, my take has always been that this government should have focused on turning around the economy first. Um, before thinking of doubling the tax, you know, uh, from Kenyans. And, and the president has, has given an example of what Kibaki has done. Kibaki did not, did not start with the tax. Kibaki grew the economy from 200 and, um, you know, the revenues from 200 billion to 700, above 700 billion. Mm -hmm. And so the tax grew consistent with that. You know, the tax revenues grew from 220 billion to 800 billion because they were consistent with the growth of the economy. So I think you need to really turn around the economy. And the economy is, is, is tricky. When you say the economy has grown, uh, quite often the figures we get from Treasury is what I call the elitist part of the economy. Because like last year, you are told, uh, and it's in this document, that the economy grew by 7.5%. If you walk to Kenya and tell them, really, the economy grew last year, the, okay. president, the former president was on record in the campaigns that the economy is in bad shape. This government, when they were campaigning, they, they, that was the platform on which they came in, that the economy is, is really bad. It's okay. collapsed. So, so you're saying the impact of that growth is yes, not felt? Yes, it's to not going to be, so it's what, not what, normally felt down. The so economy, how should, how, when you, you say... You see the figures, yeah. let me explain. The figures that you see, 
uh, of, of the growth comes from those sectors that do not necessarily impact on the, on, 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 the, on the majority of Kenyans. They come from the banking sector, they come from ICT sector, you know, the growth in Safaricom, they look at this infrastructure like when you pump in billions into Expressway and SDR, those are the things which create all those figures. Mm -hmm. But majority, 80% of the Kenyans are in agriculture. You look at whether that sector grew and you find those sectors growth is, 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 is more or less stagnant during that period. So the, the, so the figures of growth that the government always shows do not necessarily uh, reflect the, the reality on the ground. This is why this government came on that plate to turn around the economy because they said the economy has collapsed. But their figures, when you read tells you that our economy is done 6.5 last year, the previous year 7.5, and this year we want to do another, uh, you know, 6.3 or something. So <coughs> I, I, I think we have to be rational in, 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 in the utilization of these figures because the reality is down there people don't see that impact of, you know, of growth that you keep... And, and, and will, will this strategy work? Uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government, we all know, um, one of the biggest winners in this budget are the farmers. Access to cheap fertilizer as a state-funded uh, subsidy program, the one that was launched. There's also the plan to um, you know, boost small business owners uh, through state loans. Uh, we all know the Hustler Fund that uh, every Kenyan can now access. Will that progressively give us some form of results, Mish well, I think it depends if they implement it. Mm -hmm. If they implement it effectively, <laughs> yeah. is really... uh, it will. You see, if you, I agree with what um, you know, um, Ayub said earlier. You know, the, the focus of this of this government's manifesto, which is which is which is uh, you know, um, in the same in the budget policy statement, is uh, value addition in agriculture. Agriculture seems to be the main the main thing really that they want to turn around this economy based on the agriculture. Uh, the cost of living uh, will reduce based on agriculture. Everything is premised on the success of agriculture. Um, and agriculture, um, the, 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 uh, the subsidy for, for the fertilizer is one thing. But when you look at reports by experts, there's a lot more that needs to be done in terms of uh, getting the cost of production uh, cheaper because fuel is a major expense. Okay. Uh, you know, you have to want, deal with the cost of energy. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with the cost of, of, of transportation and so forth. You have to deal with tax. It's a major issue, by the way. The reason why all these things are expensive is because of tax. Everything here has got one form or the other of tax on it. Okay. Um, so I think they need to look at it, you know, in a very uh, holistic manner, not, not just on fertilizer. You know, every government, including the previous one, when mm -hmm. they came in, they had focused on, on giving subsidies and fertilizers. But that did not always turn around the situation on, on the okay. cost of food. Yeah. Okay.